Hey guys, just another quick video about Japan Post. <laughs> Some of you would have seen videos we've made about them before, but just want to give you guys the full picture so that if you do find yourselves in Japan, you'll know what to expect. So recently, a young relative of ours who lives in Ireland decided to send one of our kids a letter to like be a pen pal, you know, old style, old style before computers. So he's an elementary school kid, our, our, school, our kid's an elementary school kid. So he wrote a letter and he included three or four photos of just his family and things. And he stuck it in this envelope and he sent it. They put a couple of stamps on the front of it and they threw it in a letterbox. And magically it arrived at our house and the kid opened it and went, isn't that great? And I'll send him an answer. So our kid wrote a letter and included a photo and a new year card just to show show him what our new year cards are like and a couple of pokemon cards because he said he was into poke, pokemon right so so you can see that this is what that that's the size of their letter and you can see it's pretty thin because as i said there's only three photos in it and a letter so here's our response and it's the same size envelope and slightly thicker maybe because there's a couple of pokemon cards so maybe we've got to three millimeters maybe three millimeters on that on that envelope and uh so knowing what i do about Austra uh, japan post i didn't really want to go <laughs> but my wife was going anyway because it's new year and they do a lot of card things so i said so would you mind would you mind sending this to ireland while you're at the post office and i knew it wouldn't happen like that i knew it wouldn't happen like that but i asked her anyway and because she's way more patient than i am so she went off to the post office and then when she came back, she went, oh, mmm, and she still had the envelope in her hand, right? And I wasn't the slightest bit surprised. Um, and she'd written all these notes. So they'd, they'd done exactly what I thought they'd do. They've looked at it and gone, oh, mmm, mmm, never seen somebody send an envelope to somebody before at the post office. What shall we do? Doshio, doshio. So they said to her that she needed to have, uh, what do they call it, Tarek? Some of you live in Europe will know about this, the tariff number. You need a tariff code. And it's a tariff thing. It's, a, it's a, a tax thing, right? So the idea is if companies are sending goods to people within Europe or in Europe, that they need to have a tax code, right? But this is a letter. This is a letter with a card and a photograph, right? So they said they need a tariff code for everything that's in the envelope. And they need us to fill out this little form thing that I th have since thrown the rubbish. But we need to fill out this little form thing, and we need to say, we need to say what it, what's in there and what the tariff code is. Now the the tariff code is ten letter, ten numbers long, ten digits long, and the space to to do it is on this little form is about five millimeters, right? So that's not going to happen. And then the value of everything that's in there. So what is the value of a letter written on a piece of paper by an elementary school kid? What value would you put on that? And she said, because I, I filled this out and wrote nil, 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 because, you know, what value is there on that? And she said that, oh, no, you can't do that. They said you can't write nil on it. And you have to write the, uh, the, the, the place of origin of each of the things. So where did the piece of paper originate and where did the photo originate and where did the card originate? So, right. So I looked it up. I hadn't heard of a tariff code before. So I looked it up and sure enough, there's a number there and it's the same number for all those things. So I, I tried to do the card, but I wrote nil. So that's not going to work apparently. So the next step is I'm going to go to the post office and I'm going to go in there with a positive attitude and, and lots of uh, patience and ask them to tell me what value do you think I should put on a letter written by a child and what value should I put on a photograph and what value should I put on two Pokemon cards and see what they say, right? See what they say and I'll get back to you and tell you what happens, okay? Here we go. So guys, one of the good things about dealing with bureaucracies like the post office in Japan is when you do manage to achieve what you're trying to achieve, it's an amazing sense of satisfaction. <laughs> So I actually walk to the post office, give me time to psych up and get in the right frame of mind. You've got to go in there with, you've got to leave any sort of logic or reason or anything else outside. And you've got to go in there and behave like a Japanese person, which is to be very patient and very relaxed. 
and accept everything that they say as being, oh, oh, oh I see, I see, I see, right? And, and that's got to be your attitude to get through the, the process, right? So I walked in and I had two, two envelopes. I had one going to Osaka, so that was easy. Okay, boom. And then I put down the other one going to Ireland, right? Oh, oh. And so straight away, and the, the, it, it wasn't busy, so another lady came over and said, there's two of them there. And they got the book out, the international book, you know, and, and said, you need a, you know, Ireland. Ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. And what's in here? And I said, it's a letter and a postcard and a photograph and two Pokemon cards, right? And they said, ha, oh, ha, ha, ha. And, and they got the book out and looked at it and they said, you need a Tarek code, right? And I said, oh, really? I said, uh, what, which Tarek code is it for this one? And they, ah, oh, mm, she don't know, don't know, <laughs> right? And I said, ah, oh, and I'd written on the back of the envelope, I'd looked it up and the tarot code for the paper and cardboard and stuff is the same apparently so I just wrote that that number on the back of the envelope so I said oh I've got this tarot code oh and that, and then they're asking me is it the same code for the letter and for the card and for the photograph and for they're asking me and I said to them is it in your book because in their book it said to send anything to European Union you have to use a tarot code but it doesn't their book didn't have the tarot codes so in other words, and this is typical, it's exactly what we've talked about with Japan Post before. They just put up the obstacles. They don't have the solutions, you know? And exactly what happened this time, my wife got, went in, they said they couldn't help her basically because she didn't have the tarot code and she walked out again. And, and I, so, but I asked them in, in a Japanese way, not like, why the hell don't you guys have the codes? If you want a code, why don't you have it? Because it's just a list of codes. And, and I didn't say that. I said to them, oh, you don't have the code. No, oh, okay. But the book, is it in that book? I said, in that book, really innocently, you know, is it in that book? No, it's not, oh. So the book says that the, the customer has to have a tarot code, but it doesn't tell them where. This is the post office. Isn't it amazing? It's like going to a post office in a normal country that doesn't have a book of postcodes to tell you what the postcode is if you don't know it, you know? it's just, That's all it is, really. It's a tariff code, isn't it? And they don't have it. In their book, it just says you've got to have a code. So somebody's put that in a book somewhere and give it to all the post offices in Japan saying that if a customer wants to send something to Europe they have to have a tarot code but not putting including a list of the codes <laughs> which is in any other country would be considered insane right and the customers would be telling them that's insane and the staff would be telling their boss it's insane but nobody does that the customers go oh, oh, oh and go home and find the code themselves and the staff don't tell the boss this is ridiculous it's not how Japan works right so, okay, okay, tarot code. And then I said, oh, have I got to write it in there? There's a little space about five mil wide on that piece of paper. And they went, oh. And I said to them, oh, my eyes are really bad. Could you write it in there? Because it's impossible, right? It wasn't going to happen. And they said, oh, 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 maybe you can just write four letters, four numbers and four numbers and four numbers. Oh, okay. So I did that. Four, four, four two, it was. Ten, ten digits. And then and then it said how much. And I said, I said it's a letter written by a... a a kid to another kid, what's that worth? <laughs> right? And and they and one of them said, Oh, ten yen. I said, Ten yen <laughs> One leaf of paper, ten yen. Really? Oh, Uso, Uso, it's a lie, I said, it's a lie. Laughing, you know, but it's a lie. I can't write ten yen, that'd be a lie. Oh, I'll write ten yen, they said, so I write ten yen. I said, Okay, photograph, what's a photograph worth? Big discussion, right? Big discussion. And then with the postcard and they pointed up on the wall because they sell postcards in there for the New Year cards. And, and there was one up there at 63 yen. I said, oh, it's not one of those. It's just one I printed with my own computer. And they said, oh, 10 yen. So There's big discussion every step. Big discussion about the tarot code. Big discussion about, the, about, the, about the, the value of each of these things that's going in there, you know. So I 10 yen, 10 yen, 10 yen, 40 yen. And I said, oh, Uso, like I was embarrassed that I was telling a lie, you know. And then so I did that, and then at the bottom of that little form that I showed you before, it actually says, it says that I, I, I promise that what I've put in here is what, I, what I've written here is exactly what's in there, and it said, um, it said um, that there's no dangerous goods. I'm aware of the dangerous goods, and I'm, oh, there's no dangerous goods, right? I showed you the envelope, right? Three mil thick, right? <laughs> Cardboard and paper. And, and so it says that, and you sign that on that little piece of paper, right? And then they're, they're looking in their book, oh, and then they get another piece of paper. And I've talked about this before. And they bring it out and it's got all the list of dangerous goods. And you have to go down and you check it. 
not it hasn't got gasoline in it and it hasn't got batteries in it and it hasn't got it hasn't got explosives and it hasn't got guns or knives and right it's an envelope right so I got <laughs> signed all that and taking it really seriously because if you laugh if you if you treat it like you don't take it seriously I, you know makes them uncomfortable so you got to treat it really oh okay okay so I filled that out and gave it to them and uh, you've got to have a lot of free time if you go to the post office right so I got that done and then and then they said um, now now if if there's a problem if there's a problem it'll come back and that you know you'll lose your postage and I said yeah it's okay it's okay and, and oh, but but you know if, if it if it can't get to Ireland for some reason because of that code is wrong or because some problem that it'll come back and that, that the cost of your postage won't be returned to you you know big explanation and I'm saying it's okay it's okay and she kept on and on about this warning me that you know if it comes back and I said to her I said oh Ireland's really good they're not strict I said they sent us a, a letter and it just had the name and address they're not strict. I'm not worried about Ireland. And I said, if we can get it out of Japan, it'll be okay. <laughs> right? It's got to get past her. It's got to get past Japan Post. That's the hurdle. Ireland's not the hurdle. <laughs> so big explanation. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, I understand. No problem. I'm not the slightest bit worried about what's going to happen to this, <laughs> this envelope with a letter. And uh, That kid in Ireland, by the way, once asked my kid to be a pen pal, the idea is to do this regularly, and I, I'm just going to have to send an email to the parents and say, look, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. I don't have the free time to be able to do this every time, you know. So so eventually, yeah, okay, finally weighed it all up, and now, c can you pay for it? Do you want to pay for it together? So the, the letter to Osaka and the letter to Ireland, you know? Yeah, yeah, let's pay for it. Let's do that. Let's, let's go crazy and pay for it together. <laughs> Every step, you know, is a big discussion and a big explanation and loads of time, loads of time. And then finally got it done. And then, yeah, oh, thank you very much. And I, I was really polite. Thank you very much. And on a and because they're going to do this for me, right? They're going to send it off. Oh, and off I went. <laughs> off I went. It, it does. It gives you a real feeling when you finally jump through all their hurdles. You know, it's like those other bureaucracies we've talked about with the My Number card and all the rest. When you finally achieve what it is, that you're trying to achieve that would in another country would have taken probably no time. The, the guys in Ireland probably would have just stuck stamps on that envelope and thrown it in a post box. They wouldn't have to go to the post office. They would have just thrown it in a post op in a post box, and it wouldn't have taken them any time at all, you know. But here, what was that? Probably about probably 15 minutes all up with all the faffing and the talking and the questions and the explanations and everything else. So. Ah, oh, Japan Post. If you can avoid it, <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. They're terrible. Anyway, that was that. More videos coming soon.